um, the Chicago Commissioner of the Department of Human Relations. Uh, she co-founded and served on the board of directors of Amigas Latinas, an organization committed to the empowerment and education of Latina LBT women. Mona has been a community, political, and cultural activist since the 1970s, including playing a major role in opening the Lambs of Evil office here in Chicago. So without further ado, Mona Noriega. So this is Mona's water, so if anyone sees me sipping Mona's water, please yell out or something. Um, and we're going to share the mic um, today, and I, I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, introduce everybody who doesn't know Mona, um, to, and introduce all of these wonderful people also to Mona and um, So Mona, I know that you have been involved in um, a lot of uh, organizing work especially uh, at the beginning of Forming Amigas Latinas, um, also opening the Land of Legal Office. Um, and I wanted to kind of just ask you a little bit about more about who Mona is and how your identity has come to be and why you got involved in that work to begin with. <laughs> um, so we, we all have that kind of piece of the story. So I want you to maybe tell us um, where, what was going on in your life when you began to identify as a Latina and lesbian? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to Manny. This is amazing. This is so wonderful to look out and see you all here. You know, this is very beautiful, and I hope uh, I hope that there's many more successes like this, and of course, being in the music. So thank you for uh, inviting me. Hello, who could get better than me with Chile? <laughs> <laughs> How did I come to start organizing? Yeah. Connecting to being a Latino lesbian. Well, you know, we, we all have a very, we have multiple identities, right? And so um, my first identity really was uh, being a survivor. You know, being a survivor in a pretty dysfunctional family. And uh, then I was a teenage mom. And so being a survivor and trying to put food on the table for the kids, that was really my who I really perceived myself to be. It wasn't until my kids were older um, that I needed to try to find family for the kids and I to be a part of, in addition to my very dysfunctional and lovely family. Um, and I, could, I didn't find any, any people who were like me. I didn't find any gay people. I didn't find any gay brown people. And I didn't find people who had children. Um, and so I started to, um, well, in addition to going out to the bars, that was the only place I found community, um, I began to organize um, Mother's Day picnics, um, events where the children, where we could all get together and talk and be together. Um, and it was great. Uh, I would have lesbian moms would sit around the table and the butch daddies would go out in another room and talk about the mom their partners or whoever, and the kids would go in another room and start talking about us. And, you know, it's, that, that was the beginning of trying to create a community that would positively reflect who I was. So when you're connecting to this community, um, you, you mentioned in the past that you, um, that part of the reason why Amiga started, and that the majority of the first members of Amiga were mothers, right? That, 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 that was one of the things that Latina lesbians kind of had in common, or that you were also looking for a community of lesbians that had children. Um, and not necessarily in the sense of where we're right now, where we are today, where you see a lot of gay couples, lesbian couples, who have children, but they have them with, as their own, as that partnership. Well, before there was Amigas Latinas, there was Iana, something called Iana, Latina Lesbiana from West Rambiente. And so that was really a bunch of uh, women who, Latina lesbians, who for the first time came together. And uh, we came together with such a fury and force uh, that we, I think, immediately exploded and went our different ways. But then the next iteration of organizing was, uh, was Amigas Latinas. And I was a part of the organizing force. 
And because I wanted to be with women who were like me, who had children, you know, we began to attract other women who had children. But I have to say, when, uh, when we were forming Amiga Latinas, that we, it was open for women who loved women. And oftentimes it included women who were married and or women who were divorced or women who didn't want to stay, didn't know who they were. And that, and that actually was okay. But oftentimes women, Latino women came with children. And so creating a space that was family focused, but allowed for a, that it didn't make us choose between being a lesbian, which is so loaded in terms of being sexual, but don't they know that lesbians have the least amount of sex? But the, you know, it, it, you don't have to choose between being a lesbian and being a mom and being Latina, right? And so that's, uh, for Amigas Latinas, it was about creating community, as you're doing here. You're creating community right now. You're creating some common values of how you're going to support each other. And, and you have to meet organizers and you need to support it. And so for me, that's what Amiga Sotinas was about. It was about creating something um, for women and then all the various identities that we had going on and creating a safe space for all those identities. Um, and congratulations for that. <laughs> A lot of people don't know, Mona, that um, when you were 12 years old, you ran away from home. And, um, and that was kind of the, um, the part of the story where you ended up uh, dropping out of, of high school. Um, how did you get back on? Because I love that story of someone who people see and admire and don't think has ever gone through anything or has had any type of um, issues, right, like we all do. Um, can you share that a little bit? Well, you know, part of being a survivor is uh, surviving with a smile. And so, yeah, I was, uh, I loved home when I was 12. Um, I was married by the time I was 15. Um, I dropped out of three high schools. I was practically kicked out of my grade school. Um, so, but what people know about me is that I'm a professional person, or, or, and whatever that means to them, right? Um, but I never went to high school. And so in order for me to, to even go to college, I had to get a GED. And getting a GED was very difficult, because I didn't even, you know, I just had to study and, and do it myself. And then um, I went to uh, Northeastern Illinois University, and it took me about six years to get my undergraduate. And uh, you know, I think being a survivor means that you have uh, survivor skills, and it means that you figure out what you don't know, and then you figure out what you got to do to get it done. And it's not about you know, it's not about a pity party or feeling sorry for yourself. You can cry, that's okay, but. It means that when you're a survivor, you go, this is what I want, this is what I need to do to get there, and then you just do it, no matter how long it takes. To, I, I won't say it was an easy road, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I think that's uh, helped me to um, realize my value in terms of being able to learn things and apply them in different situations. And uh, from once I figured out that I could uh, read and write and go to school, I was like, I just kept on trying to do, take on new challenges that, that um, warm my heart. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> um, how, well, I know that you've been partnered with the vet for 18 years. Congratulations. Uh, and how did you meet? How did you meet? And how did you meet? And well, when do you connect? Not necessarily how do you meet, like, because I think you've met once and in passing, but when is that spark? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know what, Eva and I met through, uh, through organizing. Uh, she was, um, mm -hmm. actually, she was holding a safe sex workshop for lesbians. And uh, 
I went to her house where it was a small gathering, and um, I went, wow, she's pretty amazing. And uh, one night we got together, and I never went home. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, the Commission on Human Relations uh, enforces the, the human rights ordinance. So those are all the anti-discrimination laws. So if you're discriminated because you're gay or you're race or a country of origin, any of those issues, you come, you come to us. But if you are the victim of a hate crime, you need to call the police. I want you to call the police. I want you to make a report, even if you're not hurt, because we need to make a record of when violence is uh, addressed to us because of whatever, sexuality or because of our race. We need to make a record of this so that in the future, should some crime occur, that uh, by putting all the, the reports together, my candidate indicate who the perpetrator is, then we have an opportunity to put a stop to a hate crime. We could not, you have the opportunity of perhaps preventing a hate crime to be committed against somebody else. So if you're a victim of a hate crime, <clears throat> what that means is somebody uh, commits a crime against you due to a protected class, and a protected class means that uh, you cannot commit uh, a crime against somebody based on 15, there are 15 classes, but for us mostly it's about the, um, your uh, sexual orientation, your gender identity, your race, your sex, um, any number of issues that sometimes people want to come up to us, get in our face, they want to say something, they want to punch you, they want to hurt you, they want to, you know, do that. That's a crime. And that is a crime that we need to hold the police accountable to. They do want, if so you need to call, we need to make a record, and then we need to make sure that you get service. In other words, that there are charges that are pressed, that are courts, some of those are courts, and if you don't get that, then you call us, you call me. Um, we have a lot of advocates in the police department who are working for us, and they will step forward to the police office who are not stepping in front. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.